This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Very happy to meet up with James today. James has an awesome DIY custom camper van using recycled materials, has over 20 years RV experience and really did a great job on this one. So join us for the tour. Hey Patrick, thanks for having us on here. We're big fans of your channel. We watch a lot of your videos and we got some pretty good ideas from them. We, um, we built out this van, it's a Mercedes 144 inch printer. Like I said, we got ideas from your channel and a lot of folks online. And we, we have a lot of experience over the years with different trailers and campers and even renting them overseas. So we sort of boiled it down to this and uh, I'm a woodworker and my wife is uh, very good with fabrics and all that sort of thing and colors. And uh, so we just try to blend it into this thing and, and make a nice unit. So please come and have a look. It's, uh, as you say, it says 144, which a lot of people are probably very familiar with the size. It's a compact one. We like it for ease of drivability rather than getting a longer one. It's just the two of us and we're not liveaboards. So this is a really nice travel van rather than a liveaboard. It's, uh, We've left a lot of things basic. We've tried to do some nice things. This is the original floor from Mercedes. It's a very, very hard wearing um, textured plywood uh, with phenolic uh, Im uh, embedded in it, phenolic resins. And we just pulled it up, cleaned everything real good and put some cork underneath to warm it up and, you know, be a little insulation. Uh, we have the basics in most vans you see swivel seats which are very comfortable in the evening or at, at meal times i'm usually kind of like this and doing my thing here and uh, so that i you know kind of get to stretch out like that um, as i said i'm a woodworker and luckily enough about 20 some years ago my brother-in-law was in the midst of remodeling an old resort in the catskills in new york so all this is uh, philippine mahogany this wood and that came out of that resort. And uh, we, we sort of like the idea, we've never had a boat or a yacht, but we sort of like the idea of the feel of those things. So we, we want, and also we kind of got a little inspiration from like a, a train car, like old fashioned stuff. And we liked, so that's why we went with this type of cabinetry. It's, it's very good, very convenient. We use these storage bags for our clothes and uh, keeps things compact and organized. Also easy on the head. When you're in bed, you don't come up with a big knot on your head. Um, as far as the basic construction, we, we insulated with uh, sheep's wool. Uh, it's very tightly insulated. And also because I'm a sort of a carpenter woodworker, we went with uh, fairly solid paneling on the walls. In, behind this carpeting is half inch uh, wobble board or flexible plywood. So it gives it a very, very, you know, solid feel for us. Um, basic uh, Dometic awning windows, which are quite pretty nice because you can always use them and even if it rains, have them open a little bit and they have some stops as far as how far they'll still open. And um, they're double pane, so pretty good in the, in the, you know, for the condensation or anything like that you don't get. We um, just obviously did some, try to do some decent woodwork around here and blend all this in so it, it has a nice feel. Got our little shelf up here. Everybody has one of these in the van, but uh, it's uh, store all our window covers and everything in there. And um, this curtain is a blackout curtain and it quickly goes over these knobs. So when, if you don't feel like putting up the whole curtain arrangement just for a, a short time, you know, maybe for lunch or whatever, you could pop that curtain up. It's also very handy in the cold when you want to run the heat and separate the compartments. So you get a lot of nice heat up front. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is uh, Joyce's climbing rope here. She gets in and out of the van using that. It's very handy to pull yourself up. And because it's braided, you can put a, um, 
like a you know your a coat hanger or whatever on there so we can sort of use it for drying stuff a little bit uh, again more woodwork up around here and our sort of we call it our celestial ceiling it's got some nice patterns on it which are nice to see when you're lying in bed and try to use some these are little oriental um, washers i guess you would say or embossed washers and uh, kind of go along with that theme. I uh, have some more Philippine mahogany up here. In this van, because I've been a builder for many years, it's maybe a little different from other vans. Um, all our wiring is available behind these panels. So should, uh, you know, I've seen people unfortunately have to cut their ceiling and things to get to wires. We didn't want any of that. So we in behind here's a channel so all the wiring is available like that and it still leaves me i'm about six two still leaves me enough headroom um yeah i keep saying um but i'm not used to being on camera so sorry folks but this is our little kitchen area little faucet we have a nice little um hammered copper sink here we uh, we also have a camper uh, a pull along camper and we have a copper sink in that, and Joyce wanted to stick with that theme. Cabinetry, also all Honduran mahogany. Um, and our toilet, which uh, we don't use every day. Uh, you know, it's, we use it when there's not something more established available. But basically, it's a, your basic composting toilet. Works very well for us. We can get a few weeks out of that. And uh, so that's quite convenient. It has a fan that draws air through. You guys are probably, anybody who's interested in vans is probably familiar with that. And a little switch here for that fan so that we don't, we can have it on when we need it and we don't run the battery needlessly. This is our basic junk area. A little embarrassing to see all this, but all our, all our toiletries, our towels and things like that, the kind of stuff you just need every day goes right there. And uh, yeah, so this, again, this, this cabinetry is all the Honduran mahogany. It was all in very thin panels, so I've laminated all of that and done some tongue and groove and uh, joinery like that. Uh, back up here, this countertop also is recycled. This is uh, white oak. It's actually quarter sawn white oak, so when you see it from different directions, you get a lot of colors in it. And this was came out of a, an old uh, farm yard down the road from us, and uh, we laminated that to make our cabinetry. Um, moving on, we got the, the Camp Chef stove, which is really nice. The burners are quite good and strong. And it has a nice little oven. We, we love an oven. Um, we always find that when we're traveling, we get, you know, can buy prepared foods and local foods, and the oven really works for that. Uh, this is this odd looking thing back here is basically there is some wasted space back in here. It is basically just to allow airflow for the oven. We don't need it for the burners, but when the oven's on, you want to be safe and have that. And we've got some lighting here, adjustable dimmers for our for our puck lighting back underneath here. Uh, a little funny thing here is just made little uh, wedges so that the puck lighting wasn't pointing straight down, that it would point a little in onto the bed. And what else? We have a charging port here um, for USB, and that's also our handy uh, way of checking our, our battery. Underneath, we got, uh, let's see what we've got under here. Probably a little more messy, but you'll have to bear with that. Lots of storage space down here. Just the things in the back that we don't have to get to every day, and, and the snacks, of course, that we have to get to, <laughs> you know, in emergencies. Um, and uh, sort of that is there. What else have we got? Basic some cabinetry here, pots, pans, 
uh, dishwashing stuff. We don't keep a lot of stuff out. We find that it rattles and um, we like to just tuck it away when we're moving and everything. Over here, this is kind of a, a funny spot. This is my wife's lounger or her seat. She generally sits here, you know, when we're eating or cooking and that kind of thing. And um, it has this funny little back piece on, which can be used in either direction. So if she wants to sit with her legs facing in, we use it the former direction, and then it becomes sort of a, <laughs> you know, sort of a custom lounger here otherwise. Eh, what else? And this is also our refrigerator. So we just pop this guy off, and this is quite a nice fridge. You've probably seen these online. Doors work either way, or completely off. And so it's very convenient to load it from the outside, which, you know, when you're doing your groceries and stuff, that's pretty handy. As far as the design of the van goes, one of the reasons you see a lot of stuff like it is in here is because I actually sold my pickup truck in order to, that we didn't have too many vehicles and that kind of thing. So a lot of these things in here are built for that purpose. The fridge can pop out quite easily uh, along with these items. And that gives me a big cargo space right in here. Um, we left a very big open garage, you know, and I guess that's the term they use for that area, an open garage so that I can configure that any way I need to. Um, I can put lumber in here that's 11, 12 feet long as long as it fits between the seats or 10 footers that doesn't fit between the seats. The bed, as well as being a bed, also can come out, but it's excellent when it's in its open position for carrying plywood on top. So that's that's just part of that idea. Um, back in this area, you see we have our windows. These are quite nice. They have shades, which, you know, and also screens. So they're, they're, they work out well that way. And they're double pane insulated. We have the basic uh, max air fan and uh, multi-speed, both directional, that type of thing. You can use it when it's closed. We haven't done that much, but they, it does circulate air when it's closed if you're running some heat. So as you notice, we have the fan here rather than an air conditioner. We've generally found that it's suitable for our needs. If we open the front window and we put the fan on, it pulls air through here very, very nicely. We also decided on that in order to, to keep our electrical system, you know, fairly basic and easy to deal with, not, not have a lot of extras there. Um, it's the same size hole in the eventuality if we should decide to put air in. And um, so that's where, that's the way we went with that. This is a little strange, but it's a little funny too. This is our, we like to call this our infotainment system. Takes a little getting used to, but you'll see the magic of it in a second. This is my wife's giant iPad. So that just goes right there. I have a little hook here and a little adjustable string here. What you basically wind up with is a nicely angled television set where you can sit here and watch. If you're lying down, you can angle it a little more or a little bit less. If you're in the front part of the van, cooking or whatever, and you just maybe want to watch something or even listen to music and have it handy, you can just put it around the other way. So that's our high-tech infotainment system. <laughs> it works very well. I know it looks a little funny, but it works very well. Um, yeah, so some more things here are railroad-style cabinetry. We we like the look of these old rail cars and different things, and uh, so we went with this. It's all screwed together. It's all bolted up into the ceiling, so anything can be removed. Um, accordingly, we, we left uh, some metal still um, exposed. We had considered covering all that with the carpeting, 
but it's pretty handy to have these lights and things that uh, can be put on here. All our hooks if we want to dry stuff. We have our little lights here. These things are great. Point around the room and they have a little uh, USB port on them as well. So uh, we're going to have a look at our bed here. It, um, it basically turns into a, a queen size bed plus. The, it, takes, it takes a little getting to know but it's very convenient in the long run. Sorry. Of course, I'm fouling it up, which is always happens when you're on camera. But it's a bit of a system, and uh, takes about five minutes, maybe even a little less, I'm not sure, to do. These legs are in storage here. We chose to do the bed this way because it's, we didn't want to cut large bump outs into the, into the walls. We wanted to have a more normal type um, van. We didn't want the big bump outs. So basically you get your, uh, get, get those cushions off. This cushion comes off, just pops down here. Actually pops through there. And we have a couple pins here. This keeps it in solidly in place while you're driving. Out we come. This guy should be following. My wife's assisting there. Put these little, we have um, rare earth magnets in the top of the legs so that um, they're easy to handle. And they go into holes in the floor, which I'm missing just a little bit now. There we go. For the bed, the last thing you need to do, which is put these two pins back in. That way, that way your bed doesn't move around when you're sleeping or whatever. Just line the lines up, drop it in. Your last big cushion goes back up. And the final thing is these guys usually have to crawl up on the bed for it, but I won't do it this time. As they go back there, they lean against that little headboard in the back, and that becomes your bed. Also, what we normally do is slide this all the way over like that. This way is my wife sleeps on this side, and we, she has a little storage area there where she can put her book and her phone and her glasses and also charge overnight. And pretty much otherwise, the front here, standard Sprinter cab. This is a 2020 six-cylinder uh, diesel. And the only sort of addition up here is this little switch. This is great because this is a, uh, to dump, to remotely dump the gray water tank. You pull over a drain, flip the switch, it does it. You don't have to be out there fiddling with a valve or anything. And what else? Around back. We have some of the nuts and bolts or whatever. Let me get these doors. They're pretty cool. They go all the way around. This is our big garage. We we also oh yeah we also have a, a tow bar here, which is I think 5,000 pounds rated, and we have shore power here. So inside a big garage, we haven't specialized the garage. We like a lot of flexibility in what we do. Sometimes we go kayaking, we bring all our stuff here. We have a 21 gallon water tank, fresh water tank here with the fill. We got the tank in here and we have a little, just a little access door. You can reach in, your water pump is there. There's some valving there to drain and to also just shut off the water supply if you'd like to get to the water pump and all that. A couple screws, these popped out. You can access your water pump and your filter here. This is the sort of electrical side of everything. We have a 100 amp hour battery, runs our lights, our fridge, and our fan very well. Further in, we have a DC to DC converter, uh, AC to DC charger power supply. Our, this is our AC supply. This is something you can buy right off the shelf but a very sensitive um, ground fault interrupter on that. What I like about it also is it's, not an, it's a non-resetting one. So if you have an issue, 
you really don't want something to reset until you sort the issue out. So I use these, use these in my construction work all the time and it works very well in there. Uh, access for the electrics is again a fairly simple arrangement, very basic. Just simple switches or latches. Oops, sorry. And that's that. Basic uh, fuse panels, inline fuses, fuse blocks. This is our DC to DC charger, and uh, we haven't done any solar on this vehicle. We drive pretty much every day, so we don't actually never felt the need for solar. This unit will control solar panels if necessary, but we just have not felt the need for those. Underneath here, you can see the slats of the bed, and we also have, this is a unistrut. It's something commercially available. It's made for construction work and for holding pipes and electrical conduits. Very strong, and it allows me to have a thin bed rather than have large panels on the end of the bed. And it's also convenient if you want to add anything in here. Very you This is our... What you saw from the front, maybe you can see a little better now, is the, the headboard for our bed. It's nice for sitting up, and uh, this is also all out of a combination of the recycled oak and the recycled mahogany. It's got a lot of character, <laughs> and we like that about it. One last item is just um, the doors. The doors have all been insulated and have a um, quarter-inch uh, birch veneer plywood rather than the plastic panels that we got with them. We put a couple of little pockets up here when you're in bed. It's nice to be able to reach back over your head and just stick a little your glasses in there, your cleaning cloth, just the basics. James, thank you very much for taking the time today to give us a tour of your awesome creation. This is beautiful. I love what your wife and yourself have done with this van conversion. Having RV experience in the past, you learn a lot. You learn you what you need and what you don't need. And when you build your own, you build it exactly the way you like. I like the fact that you said you don't have solar on board because you drive a lot. That yeah. DC to DC charger in a couple hours, not even, will charge your battery completely up. Yeah, I mean, usually the battery in the morning is not that low to begin with. And that charger brings it right back up. It's, it's, it's a great invention, I'll tell you. And off camera, I spoke with your wife and she did mention that there's provisions and there's room that if you wanted to do like a hallway shower, you could. You could tap oh, yeah. into the kitchen sink and uh, use one of those like dog, dog pool type showers yeah. and, and take a shower if you need to. But tell us a little bit about experience with that. You can go to the campground and use their shower, right? Usually um, we're quite happy to do, a, you know, what you call a sink bath in here um, for a number of days. And then when we feel the need, we get into the campground and it's nice to get into a campground, use a full bore shower, maybe do some laundry, you know, get some fresh water. It's just a nice way to break things up for us, you know. And I know life changes, travel plans change. You are now going to be doing some different type of traveling and you're eventually going to be selling this van. We are. So yeah. If it's for sale at the time of the video, I'll make sure I put links in the description so our viewers could click over and check out your ad. I think you've guys done a fabulous job with this van. I love the word working. It reminds you of a yacht and a train car, like you said. I love trains and I, I love uh, Airstreams. Yes. And it's got a little mixture of both of them. So excellent job. Thanks, Patrick. We really appreciate it. Yeah, we are in the next few years planning to do a lot of overseas traveling. And um, so it's time to make some changes, but yeah, we're, we appreciate you doing this video and all your encouragement. I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to film it before you do sell it because <laughs> this is fabulous. Thank Liz you. Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you so much.